And we see players already making their moves. Stingo on the play, leading on a Sulfurus Springs. Tapped. Well, I see, it seems like both players kept sevens. Yeah, and being on the play here is huge for Dingo because he can Bowmasters on turn two right away if he wants to. Yeah, that's a brutal play to get your Ragavan Bowmaster. So seems like that's got, that's what's going to happen with Young Dingo passing the turn, choosing not to play the Psychic Frog, understandably so. The Blood Moon is kind of an interesting draw. Like if, if Canister can get that down, it could, like, you don't you necessarily... could even say Alex. Sorry, yeah. I don't know why I said Canister. <laughs> I'm, talking to Can I'm talking to you right now, sorry. If Alex can get that down, the Blood Moon could be could be interesting. For I mean, it, it kind of hoses both sides a little bit. But... Yeah, no planes on Alex's side, so Blood Moon is a double-edged sword for now. So certainly he's going to think twice before deploying it. Let's see if Dingo is going to respect it and fetch an island. Well, it seems like he doesn't need to. Yeah, easy. The options are to play Psychic Frog or hold up an Archmage's Charm, and Dingo chooses to summon the Frog. It does make sense with four cards in hand. It's pretty hard to deal with. Alex has one of his few Static Prisons available to take care of it, but... Static Prison needs energy, it needs to come from somewhere, so not the most convenient to have to play it out so early in the game. What do you think about firing a discharge off on the, or yeah, maybe firing a discharge off on the frog or, or, or a bolt just to kind of see what happens? I mean, he has he has six damage in hand, right? So he can mm -hmm. he can get rid of the frog here. Certainly, that's also an interesting route to pursue. Galvanic Discharge especially kind of powerful in dealing with the frog. Well, maybe not dealing with it, but it's pretty pretty powerful. The fact that you get to choose how much energy you spend to actually deal damage only upon resolution is pretty good in this particular matchup. Yeah, like he could have gone hub and then you're, you're threatening to deal four. But it's, I mean... As it turns out, Young Dingo's hand is pretty pretty decent, so um, he just lets it die. Wow. Yeah. It would cost two cards to keep it alive, and certainly, you know, seeing that Hayne is making that choice to fire off that bolt, you're expecting him to have a plan and not just do it, expecting it to work with no backup, right? So, makes sense. Yeah. yeah. The good news for Young Dingo is that the Blood Moon, like he's got the Archmage's Charm available to him. If Hain had situated that Blood Moon in, a, you know, in like a a pretty close board state, if he had got that down, it seems mm -hmm. like it would would be pretty good. Oh wow, pretty aggressive, Giganta grab here from Alex, respecting the. More so counter spell than Archmage's Charm a lot. Yeah, I guess... I, I'm guessing that Dinga is going to take this opportunity to draw two cards. Looks like you are correct on that. Notably fetching a survival land, which means that there's one fewer island on the battlefield, but Dingo immediately draws another, so... Larbon is still somewhat... Not scary, but only a tool, not a card that would dominate the game. Yeah, and I don't know if Hain will ever have a good situation at this point to play that Blood Moon. Um, I was expecting, I guess Murktide does want a couple more cards in the graveyard. Uh huh. You could just maybe tap 5 mana, XL 2 spells, have it as a 5-5. Five five. It is safe from Discharge this way, because, well, from, from what we see on, on board, right? Hain with only one point of energy, but it's a kind of a rough play, so... Honestly, pretty awkward hands for both players, so... They're trying to navigate uh, amongst each other's spells, but... Nobody really has anything at this point in their hands. They just 
Yeah, I'm not sure what the thought process. I would have played the Dark Slick Shorts probably from Dingo. I don't think that really matters too much here, but I don't see a mm -hmm. reason to play the island instead if you're just going to pass. That's very fair. And here there is a tough decision from Dingo again. You could let Fable happen and then try to deluge the board, which is not great. You kill your own Bowmasters and you're pretty vulnerable to a removal spell on the Cat Warrior token, which would flip a Johnny and save it from save it from the sweeper. So all around just just sinking into stupor. That's a good draw, right? Because you can go Murktide with Archmage's Charm back up. Yeah, that sounds great. Even despite the fact that he played the island over Darkseid Shores last turn, he seems able to just tap out for a big Murktide region, keep up a, a Charm ready to counter the next threat, probably the Fable. I was thinking that would be his line because with the Sink to Stupor play, it's like feels like he's trying to fill up the graveyard by making that play to try to get the Murktide going as quickly as possible. That was just a little, yeah, interesting. Chikanta. Toxic Deluge also costs life, you know? So, like, if he. Mm -hmm. Be down to six, which is kind of scary. I mean, we know that Hain's hand doesn't have any bolts. He does have the arena there, though. Um, but Dingo may be thinking about direct damage. Seems like Dingo is drawing cards instead. And finally getting some ball rolling. Holy look, I'm only choosing to gain free life over drawing a card, so pretty big statement. Are we probably gonna see double Magtide region this turn? There's two giant Magtides, there is eight spells, no, seven spells in the graveyard. Yeah, presumably they would both die, so it's not gonna work out that well. He could deluge clear the board first. That way you don't have to worry think about blocking and like burn spells. Uh -huh. So push pushes an extra spell, so now you can make your Merc Tides an eight eight and a a ten ten. Am I right? I think I'm right. Um, looks like that one has three counters on it. So it's actually an 11-11, so I miscounted. Okay. So yeah, I guess the, the discharge isn't quite at the point. But I mean, he could... If Hain goes Static Prism, Discharge... Yeah, he's... Oh, that's a big draw. Wow. Mm -hmm. Damn, just two static prisons and then Fable of the Mirror Breaker. The thing to be afraid from Alex's side is perhaps the Singleton Spell Pierce, which would be awkward, so maybe maybe worth thinking about. Force of Negation, also a card in Dingo's deck, but like you're probably not too mad if that ends up being cast right here. You probably can find a way to to be okay. Yeah, so just right. I mean, the static prisons are most important, right? So you play static mm -hmm. prisons first, and then you go fable if it gets pierced. It's not the end of the world. So be it. But it looks like he might start with guide of souls, which I'm trying to think what the line is then. Maybe he's not, maybe Hain is not going to fable this turn. Yeah, I, I, I'm guessing that's probably. Well, wait, wait. Actually, I guess we forget that Giganta is also a Manadork, so maybe we're gonna see Good that call. in action. Good call. 
most most of the news for attacking and blocking but yeah here it comes so you could deploy the blood moon as well right ain't good mm, that is that is not true the only mana left in his pool is is the giganta mana so he cannot use it on paying for the colorless generic costs and, and blood wounds cost. I guess Alex chosen to play Fable first. Maybe he valued Fable over Spell Pierce. Uh, Fable over his second Static Prison. But as is, everything resolves and that's just so much stuff. Yeah, Hain, Hain is looking in, in good shape here. The toxic deluge, well, it might help a little bit, but yeah, I mean, it clears the board. If I mean the 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 prisons are gonna be eventually go away. So I guess we're attacking, which is a pretty big signal that the deluge is happening. Alex is blocking as he should. And Dingo is going to drop down to 5 life, which basically means that if this Fable finds a play, she's just dead on the spot. Yeah, and without the Bowmasters out, there's, there's no reason not to pitch two cards here. The mm -hmm. Fable... Ragavan. You can dash that pretty safely. You know that most likely. Well, you actually know that there's no bow masses. Like for for sure, Dingo would just cast the bow masses before the Fable Tigers has resolved, right? Yeah, I assume. Not sure what the Arena of Glory interaction is, but I assume it's just dashing, anyways. You you could use you could accept Arena of Glory to give it haste. So yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the interaction. Yeah. It seems like leaving it untapped for the future turns is okay. You're going to be able to spend two mana to dash Ragavan on the next turn anyways, and you can use Arena of Glory to haste anything you draw, be yes. it Ajani or Raptor or Leech. Well, this one probably doesn't need haste at this point, but... Surveilling a polluted delta to the graveyard. Not gonna help much. Priordan needs to find probably bowmasters to survive. Fatal push, maybe. Counter spell, I guess. Yeah. It does let Dingo survive, but okay. it doesn't put him in a good spot. I mean, if Hain doesn't draw anything here, the Murktides come back on the following turn right yes unless hain would use galvanic discharge on his ragavan i guess on his ragavan that's about to die or on the fable reflection to get just to gain energy yeah this is game over though anyways i think a lightning lightning bolt just you know classic lightning bolt at the top just solves the the game as it has for 30 years now yeah, I I remember the the lightning helix back in the day, the Craig Jones top deck. Yeah, and that was that was before my times, well before my times. Yeah, so. I don't think I was playing then either, but I was definitely watching. We watched old old PT coverage vods. He's like Alex is gonna, you know, do everything properly and lightning bolt only in Dingo's upkeep. And here we go. So, seems like Dingo's deck is very interested in gaining early traction, and then it's just really good at 
pushing the advantage. But if if it doesn't get that, it looks a bit shakier. Yeah, if he doesn't have any pressure, like any frog or any merc tide, the deck doesn't draw that many cards. Like you can draw with archmanges, draw, draw two cards, but this isn't really a pure control deck. It's it's more of like a tempo oriented deck. Mm -hmm. And you see the archmanges charms coming out of the deck, so not interested in them on the play in the matchup. Instead, just choosing to go with a full. Quad toxic deluge. One thing this... I'll be worried about with with so many deluges is how badly they can actually line up against goblin bombardment. If that card ever resolves, then oh, I wouldn't want to be paying life to toxic deluge ever. All right, pretty great hand for Dingo. Fatal push for the turn one play into Psychic Frog, just all you want. Yeah, and for Hain, he does double removal spell, so he can potentially play that, like, try to kill the frog immediately game. Mm -hmm. If um, we see the frog here. Hain did not go for Ragavan on turn one, so he's thinking about Presumably thinking about the Bowmaster situation. Yeah, he's he got scarred by game game one and how it played out in the early turns where it looked grim for a moment because of that, but Static Prison a nice way to deal with the frog too. So if we just cast if Hain just casts Bolt and Discharge at six damage, but Dingo with five cards in hand. Could pitch them all. It's a very costly move, though, and would it's it's actually interesting. Like you're incentivized to use bolt and discharge. Yeah, I don't think for many reasons. So hmm. I don't think Kane wants to prison this turn. I'd be surprised if I if we saw that, just because this game is probably going to go a number of turns and. Mm -hmm. That could could end up costing him later on. Whereas if he goes bolt plus discharge, well, I guess he's not doing that because he fetched the planes already. Not really sure what his. I guess he is is going to prison. I guess his his plan must be to prison instead of discharge. Yeah. My thought my thought would have been, you go for the double removal, pitch the whole hand, then you still have the prison for the next turn. With, yeah, with it's, an it's also there. pretty risky if Dingo, if Dingo draws a counter spell, then it all just falls apart. What do you think of maybe fetching a planes like Alex did and then firing off a discharge? Rather I guess there's no upside well. in fetching in fetching the planes first, but yeah, to just to, for just more energy. Yeah, I like I like that line more. I think. And yeah, basically, like you know, either you either kill the frog or Dingo protects, and you keep a lot of energy so that you you have energy for your static prison to persist. I mean, the whole fetch before you do anything is just kind of a mind game, right? Like, why are, why are you fetching the planes first? I don't know. It's, uh, it, it, it's kind of like a a meta thing. I don't know. Well, but, it could be that. It could also be you know. Rethinking your play in the middle of doing it, which yeah, that's fine. Too. Of should. course, of course, I've done that a lot of times. So I wasn't sure if it was like a calculated, like you know, mind game from Hain, which I would not put past him either. Yeah, it could be like Hain can be a really devious player in a non derogatory way. So we see a Ragavan that resolves unsurprisingly. Now Hain can go for the Amped Raptor. Presumably that will get countered, but we'll see. Yep, unsurprisingly, Dingo deems the Raptor good enough to take care of. Oh, Toxic Deluge not looking so great right now. Yeah, if 
if Dingo had had that in hand last turn, he probably would have let the Raptor happen. Still, there is a problem on Alex's side of the field with the static prism that you that you mentioned. He is running out of energy. Yeah. Now this is interesting. Just taking the hit, and actually, there is a psychic frog that popped up there. Cannot cast it right now. The the second part of the combo is yeah either half so not present right now. So it's it's working out for Young Dingo. I think this is perfect for him. I think I think mm -hmm. everything is aligning this game. It is pretty bold to take Ragavan hits, but seems like a pretty good call in this spot. And I mean, now it's kind of what you were saying before. Does he fire off the discharge to just gain more energy for the prison, or I guess Dingo would have to pitch both cards, or or Hane can just draw an energy naturally, and like an energy source. Well, it would need to be instant speed. Oh, oh okay. You mean to use to, the to the like let the frog? Yeah, just, yeah, just yeah. let him have the frog back, and then. Oh wow! This sequence of of plays was so interesting, and it actually ended with Dingo getting his psychic frog back, presumably. Although Alex gets to look for something juicy with the elegant parlor. Oh, to reveal a flage. That's that's a reverse blowout, right? Now the prison pops, but the yeah. flage escapes and it just kills the frog. And it's going to be really hard to win for Dingo. Yeah, that ended up because with that flage mill, that is huge. Basically, you know, a flooded strand became an entomb. It's just crazy. And as we mentioned earlier, not too many good answers to Fledge. And that's the best draw, I think. Sure. But you can't really block, right? So, so what are we aiming to do, to do here? Yeah, Alex can really just attack, targeting the the regent, and just probably get unblocked, deal six damage, and yeah, what's I guess next? There's, there's no exile removal available. I mean, so he could block here and hope to draw another deluge. I think that might might be might have been one of the options. Although I guess he would be at five, so that that doesn't work. Yeah, I don't know. Doesn't look good for. Oh no, he's not at five because he has to. Um, Alex has to ping the Murktide. He doesn't mm -hmm. have to. He could have just let let the trade happen and then ping on the way back out. Dingo didn't have a, a counter spell. Yeah, that's weak to weaker to counter spell. So, yeah. also a call to make, and we see Alex. Besting Bingo in two games. Those games playing out pretty significantly differently from what we've seen.